In this problem we have a sweater and a balloon. I'm going to represent the sweater with this square. And here's going to be our balloon. Now the sweater at the start will be neutral. So I'm going to draw four pluses. And every plus will have a minus that goes with it that counteracts it, right? So it's neutral. The balloon is also neutral at this point. Four pluses, four minuses, neutral. They're all neutral. Then we're going to take the sweater and balloon and we're going to rub the balloon onto the sweater. And when you rub two different materials, the materials have a different affinity or liking for electrons. And in this case, the balloon likes the electrons more than the sweater. And the sweater tends to give off electrons. You can think of the sweater as like hair. So when we rub them, this is called friction. So this is the rubbing. And this friction will cause some of the electrons to move to the item material with more affinity. In this case, it's going to go from the sweater to the balloon. So I'm going to erase some of the electrons here. And the electrons are the negative charges. The protons are the positive charges, right? The protons are too big to move, but the electrons can move. And let's say two of the electrons jump from here to over here. And I'll do those in red. So this picked up two extra electrons. This one lost two electrons. At this point, we already can name them. This one's going to be negative, And the sweater will be positive. The third part would be the separation of the two items. And the balloon is removed from the sweater. And as we can see, the balloon is still negative and the sweater is still positive. We know the primary force that caused this charging was friction because the items didn't just touch, but they were rubbed against each other, creating friction. This is necessary when you're dealing with insulators. If they were conductors, you could just touch them and the electrons would transfer. But with insulators, the electrons do not move, but if you apply friction, it will cause some electrons to go to the item with more electron affinity. Now let's do this next problem. Shade in the area where the electrons will redistribute in the conductors below. So these are conductors, meaning they are materials that allow electrons to move. And I'm going to choose red to represent the electrons. Now remember the basic rules here. A plus and a minus will be attracted. They'll come toward each other. A plus and a plus will be repelled. And a minus and a minus will be repelled. So just so you understand that these pluses at the beginning are neutral. They kind of look like this. So at the beginning, every plus has a minus with it. So in the circle, it doesn't show the minuses, but in the beginning, they're like this. So every plus has a minus. This is a neutral item. But when this positive item is brought near, notice it's not touching. The electrons, because it's a conductor, they can move. They'll move over. So they're all going to go this way. The, now, on the next one, we have a minus. It starts off like this, and then the minus comes, and all the electrons, they run away from the minus. So all the electrons are going to try to get as far away as they can from that negative. So on this one, they're all going to end up kind of on this side, and this one, they're going to end up on this side. On the can, is very similar. So the minus is going to repel the electrons. This can is a conductor uh, made of metal. So all the negatives are going to end up over here. And all the, po and the positives will stay. So this will have a negative charge over on this side and a positive charge on this side. I'm talking about the can. This circular piece of metal, which is like the end of the can, it will have a negative charge on this side for the most part and a positive side on this. And this side will be slightly negative on this side and positive on this side. So we polarized each item. Notice we didn't lose any electrons and we didn't gain any. 
So we have no net charge over the whole system, but we have polarized it so that one half of this can here is negative and the other half is slightly positive. Right? We've given it two poles, a negative and a positive pole. Kind of almost like a magnet. A positive and a negative side. Now this third one's a little more tricky. So we know that the electrons will run this way. Because they want to get away from that negative. They want to get away from this. The electrons are running this way. And they really would like to get even farther, right? And if we give them the opportunity, they will. If the hand touches it, the hand is connected to the ground because it's connected to a body which is standing on the ground. So the hand touches it and the electrons are going to go into the person. They're going to actually redistribute through the body. The body's big enough to just absorb those electrons, but basically they could just go to the ground. So at this point, the electrons would have left. They would have left the can. So I'm just going to erase this. And this can is left as soon as the person doesn't touch it anymore. the count is now permanently positive. It's lost those electrons. So this can would therefore be uh, much different than these cans, which are just polar. This one now has a net charge, a net positive charge. So this can now has a net positive charge. If we add all the pluses and the minus and look at the difference, we get the net. Net positive means there's more positives than negatives. Net negative would be there were more negatives than positives, and net neutral would be there's exactly the same. We don't even say net at that time at that, if it's neutral. So this is a net positive can now at this point. These are not net, these are neutral cans at this point because they didn't lose any electrons, but they are polar. So these have been polarized. Now the force that really caused this to be charged, this is now charged because it has a net positive or negative. The force that caused it to be charged was something came here but did not touch it. So we have four, four ways something can become charged. Friction, when something rubs up against like the balloon. Indu conduction, when something touches. Induction, when something doesn't touch but charges. And grounding. Now we saw there was grounding happening here. But the major force that caused it was this, this situation right here. So we're going to say induction was the major means which charged.